Malachi chapter number two. I got to give you all a backstory. Make sure that you're on the same page I'm on. Book of Malachi was a prophecy delivered by the prophet Malachi from God to the priest of Israel. The priest being the, for lack of a better term, ruling class of the, not just the ministration of the things of God, but they had a high place in society as well. They were counselors, they were advisors, they were, you know, for that time, right, they were psychiatrists, right? They were people that, regardless of what your problem was, if you want to know what God said about it, you went to the priest. Now, as long as the priest gives you what God says on the issue, you're fine. Right? The problem was, is that in Malachi's day, that's not what the priests were doing. Okay? Malachi is a book meant to correct the tribe known as the Levites. They were the priests. Okay? Levi being one of the sons of Israel. God had a claim to the firstborn son of every family to be a priest. Okay? That's the way that it was under the patriarchs. Go study it out. Okay? When you ever wonder, well, why was it so important that Esau sold his birthright to Jacob? Well, that was important because the firstborn son was supposed to be the priest, the spiritual leader of the family. When Esau sold his birthright, he said, I don't want God or anything to do with him. Give me a bowl of food. That's why God said that Esau hated him. And that's why he hated Esau. Esau sold God out. God didn't sell Esau out. Right? But the firstborn son was supposed to be the priest of the family. God said, I could take the firstborn son of every family and make him serve in my temple. He said, or the Levites, who one, have a desire to do it, and two, kind of a knack for it, they can serve in your stead, but you've got to take care of them. Right? If they're working in the house of the Lord, they shouldn't have to worry about food, worry about shelter, or anything like that. You take care of them. They can be your surrogate, your replacement. Okay, But the Levites will be responsible for being the ministers to the house of God. Well, all that was well and good until things stopped being so well and good. Okay, The Levites were giving misinformation they were misleading people they were giving people advice that would cause them to put faith and trust in the priest not in almighty God things that they should have said were wrong they didn't say that they were wrong anymore things that used to people would have taken a stand against they had let some of their standards relax a little bit as long as they had food and as long as everybody around them thought that they were big shots they were happy. Okay, well, there's just one problem with that. That's not what God intended nor what God wanted. Okay? By the time we get to chapter number 2 of the book of Malachi, look with me in verse number 4. It says, And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Again, he's talking to the Levites, the priests, okay? The ones that serve in the house of God. Verse number 5, My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. God tells the Levites, he said, Way back when, when I made a covenant with Levi, I didn't make a covenant with him because he was the best dressed or because he had the most wealth or because he desired to have a position, right, or to get paid to be a priest. Right? This is the book where we get that famous quote that no one would even hold open the doors of the church house without being promised payment ahead of time. They were no longer servants, they were hirelings. Okay? But God tells them, he says, I didn't make a covenant with Levi because of what he could do or because of what he desired to be. He said, I made a covenant of life and peace with him because of the reverence, the fear with which he feared me. He said, Levi revered me so much that I made a covenant with him that if he would continue to revere me and serve me in the house of the Lord, before that in the tabernacle, okay, if they 
would fear me. If they would submit, if they would serve, as thus saith the Lord, then I would give him life and peace. You guys know that trope in movies that nowadays they don't keep? Right? But where if you could get to a church, right, the law couldn't come in and get you. Okay, that if there was a time of war and there were innocents that were hiding in a church house, the church house was considered sacred, that you wouldn't destroy it, you wouldn't touch it. Right? That if they really want you to hate somebody in a movie or in a book, they'll have them burn down the church with people inside of it. You know where that stereotype comes from? It comes from all the way back in biblical days with Israel. As long as Levi did right, God would leave the Levites in the house of God alone. Israel fought a whole lot of wars. Israel had a whole lot of battles. But it wasn't until God turned over all of Israel into captivity that the house of God fell. God always took care of Levi. God had peace for him. But it also said life. People just noticed that around the temple, as long as the priests were doing well, God didn't let anything happen to them fellas. Because they held up their end of the commandment. That they feared the Lord. That they reverenced Him. That their life was not led by their own whims and wishes. Their life was subject to the, dic the dictates of God. Whatever God said, that's what we do. Well, verse number 6. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did not turn many away, or and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should, be, should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He said, Levi took his job very important. Right then, when God reinstitutes worship, when he led him out of, Israel, or out of Egypt into the wilderness, he sets up Aaron as the high priest. Aaron had a very important job. Aaron was seen, being the high priest, as the one that could enter into that holy of holies, the place that only the high priest could go. And if he came out of the Holy of Holies with a message, people knew and they expected it to be a message from God, not a message from Aaron. Levi understood that people would judge God based off of what they saw in Levi. They could not see God. They could not hear the voice of God. Right, the closest that they, we have a recording of Right, was that Moses saw his glory because God said no man can see me and live we know that the angel of the Lord appeared at times in the Old Testament but that was all that man could handle to see right, we know that the mound of transfiguration Peter he just got a glimpse and he's going to start building temples right, this is something that we ought to glory and worship over that should be remembered that we even just got to see a glimpse of what he is. Levi said, they can't see that. They don't get to hear the voice because he had that breastplate. Okay, Then he had a crown and a neck piece called the un and the thum that had the crystals that would resonate as he would be in that holy of holies and he could hear a semblance of a voice from heaven. He couldn't hear the very voice of God, but through his faithfulness, if he followed all the commands, he would understand what it was that God wanted him to understand. And he knew, people don't hear what I hear. People don't get to see the Shekinah glory fall down in the temple when the blood's applied to the mercy seat every year. People don't get to experience what I do. Their experience with God is when I come out and I tell them something. And he says, it's very important that when they see me, they can't find fault with me and disregard what it is that I have to say. That they don't have occasion to think, well, Levi's no different than we are. Levi wasn't any different than them. 
But the priests that came after that did right in the eyes of the Lord, they were no different than the other Israelites. It was just flesh and blood. But they said, we will hold ourselves to a higher standard so that we exceed the people's expectations. Not because we want to be pop, but because when we come out and we say something, they can't go and fact check us back at their house. They don't have a copy of this. They come on the Sabbath to the temple and they hear us read from the Word of God. That's the only Bible that they're going to get for the whole week. When we teach them the oracles of God, the, the commandments of God, the instructions of God, the expectations of God, if we say that God said it, they're going to believe us. So we have great responsibility. We will conduct ourselves accordingly. What did Levi purpose in his heart? Well, it says in verse number 6 that the law of truth was in his mouth. You know what the law is? That's the difference between right and wrong. It says the law of truth because there's also a law of deception. It started way back in the garden. Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall become as gods, knowing the difference between good and evil. You too can ascend up to what it is to be God. You're in control of your own destiny. You can become what is required in order to call yourself a deity. Right nowadays they call that humanism. But it started in the garden. That's the law of deception. Amen. It's the law of lust. It's the law of sin. Whatever you want to call it, it ain't truth. The law of truth that was in Levi's lips, you know what that was? That was the law delivered by God. Amen. That wasn't just what was on the tablets that we call the Ten Commandments. That was all the whole council of God's commandments. All 600 and some odd laws that were to be delivered to the people, why? So that the people could keep them. God didn't give the commandments for Levi. God gave the commandments, or the commandments for all of Israel. Okay, when Aaron became high priest, he didn't just have to keep the law for himself. No, he was in instructed to teach Israel what the law of God was. And then Moses has his job to make sure that they followed it. Moses received the law. Aaron offered up sacrifices for what? When they didn't uphold the law. But Moses went off the scene. You know who was the keeper of those things that Moses recorded? The Levites. Later on, they had little disagreements between themselves. But by the time you get to Jesus' day, there are some that called themselves the Pharisees. There are some that called themselves the Sadducees. And there were some that called themselves scribes. Others called themselves lawyers that specialized in knowing the law. But they were the upper class by the time Jesus came around. You know why? Levi was only concerned with saying, delivering, relaying what it was that God expected of man. The priest in Jesus' day, all they were concerned about was saying what made them look important or smart or educated or powerful. The words that were in their mouth may have been true, but they had a spin on it, or they said it in such a way and delivered it to make themselves look higher than they actually were. Levi didn't care what people thought of him. His words, because they knew or he knew that the people expected to hear what God say on the issue, he trained his tongue to do what? To say what God said. Not to say what Levi wanted to say. The Levites were commanded to be the same. But then it says, not only was the law of truth in his mouth, it says no iniquity was found in his lips. What's iniquity? Unequal dealing. Not half-truths, those are lies. Iniquity and lies, two different things. Lying's a sin. Sin and iniquity are different. It says that his mouth was full of the law of God. You know what that means? He didn't give them any sinful laws. He gave them the righteous laws of God. 
It says no iniquity was found in his lips. That didn't mean that he went out and told people what God expected and then lived something different. It didn't matter if you caught him at the temple, if you was having a conversation with him down at the Walmart, you ran into him at the farmer's market when he wasn't in his priestly robes or his apparel. There was no iniquity in his lips. If you asked Levi what God had to say, he always told you what God had to say. When he conducted himself on his own business, right? maybe he's just going out and visiting some family or some friends. If you listened, his words in private matched with the words that he said publicly in front of Israel. There wasn't a, oh, that group has to do it, but this group doesn't. No, it was all or nothing. That's why God chose him. Because he was purposed, to be the same in public as he was in private. In fact, long before God let him in public say what thus saith the Lord, in private he had already been living up to those standards. But it says, verse number 7, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. You know what Levi did in his spare time? You know what Levi eventually became his job to do? What his descendants for generations and generations, what was required of them was to know what God said. To know what the Lord expected. To know the very standards of God and to know what God did or did not find acceptable. They had to be knowledgeable. That took time. That took commitment. You know when they would study the Word of God? When they were copying it to make sure that the next generation had a copy just like they did. They would receive instruction from those priests that had been in the faith longer. All day they were laboring around the house of the Lord, meditating on the things that they had studied. They gave themselves over to becoming a very mouthpiece for God. They were meant to be a messenger. They were not the message. The message came from God. It's just the delivery vehicle. In Levi's mind, he just wanted to be the mailman. How many times have you heard our preacher say that? He says, don't thank me, I'm just the mailman. But it wasn't my message, it was the Lord's message. But it's not my thought, it was the Lord's thought that he gave to me. That's called being a messenger. A mouthpiece. I'm just relaying what was delivered unto me. Okay, He put it in my hand and then I put it in your hand. That's what happened. Levi desired to know so much about the things of God that he didn't have to rely upon his carnal instincts to give an answer. You ever get caught off guard with a question and you've got to improv an answer on the spot? you got to come up with something? I'm not talking about spirit. I'm talking about anything. Or you're just caught off guard. Well, I wasn't expecting that question today. Right, Levi never wanted to be caught in that situation when it came to the things of God. But Levi, what's God say on this? Well, I'm glad you asked, actually. I know that one. By the providence of God, I studied up on that two weeks ago. He never wanted to say, well, I'm pretty sure that the answer is, no, that wasn't good enough for Levi. He wanted to know. Amen. God says, in verse number 7, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge. You know what that means? Some of them weren't keeping up to that standard. That should be the rule. But it was the exception in this day and age. He says, and they should seek the law at his mouth. They being Israel should seek the law at the mouth of the priest. You want to know when America really started getting into trouble? When the laws that they put down on paper didn't match up with the law that God had commanded. When they started coming up with laws that they thought would be good, that they thought would bring change, 
or would bring about a certain outcome. You know where the law should be sought at? The difference between right and wrong should be sought at the mouthpiece of God. Nowadays, you find that down at the church house. Back then, you found it at a place called Tabernacle. Then eventually, at the temple. Every Sabbath day, you know where Jesus was? At the temple. Why? In case somebody wanted to know what God said, he was going to tell them. You never find him where he's not sitting down and teaching, educating. People came and sought answers from him. Why? Because they knew that he was a mouthpiece of God. What they didn't realize is that he was the very voice of God. But they had confidence that he knew what God said. And they came from all around, far and wide, just to know because they weren't confident that the priest in their day knew the answer. They knew them to be hypocrites. They knew them to be whited sepulchers full of old men's bones. Painted to look pretty on the outside, but dead inside. So when they found someone that did speak, as, you know, ne never man spoke like Jesus. When he spoke, people paid attention. They had confidence that he knew what God expected and what God commanded a man. There were still people that wanted to know what it took to be right with God. And when they found out that somebody knows, somebody's been dedicated, it's right for the populace to want to know what God says, and it's also right, according to this book, that they should seek the law at the lips of the mouthpiece. Those that have been ordained to be the representative of God but then it also says for he is the messenger of the Lord capital L-O-R-D in your Bible of host you know what that means he's the messenger of Jehovah you know who that is that's the I am that's the alpha and omega the beginning the end he's the one that said let there and then everything happen that's the very God who holds all of creation in the palm of his hand. It's the same God that through the personage of his son became the lamb to die for your sins so that he could pay your sin debt which he knew you couldn't afford. It says he's the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You know what that means? Again, I'm thinking all them Civil War and Western movies that I've watched. When a guy on a horse shows up and he says, I've got a message from the general, people pay attention. When a guy comes running into camp and he said, I had a whole company with me. Kind of like in the account of what happened to Job. I and I alone have escaped to deliver this message from the president to you. You know what they usually do to that fella? They don't kick him and say, give me the message. They treat him with respect. Because he was entrusted by somebody who was very important and had a message that was very important. How important was it? It was so important that they wanted it delivered through the lines of war. It has to get to our men on the other side. It was that important, and the guy who was very important, that had something very important to say, picked that guy for a reason, to deliver the message. You know why? Because he was faithful. Because he had the trust of that very important person. And because that very important person knew that when he handed him the letter, that the letter would be delivered in the exact same state. Many times that letter, before it would be sealed, they would bring that person in and they would read it to them until they memorized it just in case something happened to the letter. Then they would fold the letter up and seal it. And then they'd give them a token, something that proved that they came from the president or from the general. Something that if the letter got lost, hey, he sent me. The letter was destroyed. I had to destroy it to keep the enemy from finding it. 
But this is proof that I am who I say I am, and this is what he said. He made me memorize it before he sealed it with the seal. That's how much the man in charge trusted that guy to deliver the message. You know what happened when the people that he was sent to received it? They usually honored, respected him, and they recognized what he sacrificed in order to make sure they got what they needed. They usually said, get the guy a meal, get him a blanket, put him next to the fire, right? Give him a bed to sleep in. He's ridden all night or he's run through the swamp, get him some dry clothes. They took care of that fella because they recognized that the one they respected entrusted that guy. So he must be something special. Now he may not look like much if you'd have seen him running through the woods, getting smacked in the face with branches and cut up and running away from the enemy or riding on a horse all sweaty and or, or covered in rain. He may not have looked like much, but when you found out who he was and who sent him, your viewpoint changed. Go look at the average array and apparel of a Levite day in and day out. You know what it was? His basic clothes. Is the necessities. Now everybody likes to think about those formal garments that were given to the high priest and the breastplate and the crown that was given unto him and he had a scepter, a rod. They think, man, that guy looked like something. He only got to wear that once a year. Usually. Unless for some other reason God said, go into the Holy of Holies. There were things that they did at certain times, but you know what they looked like most of the time? They looked like guys in normal clothes. You know what they were supposed to look like? They were supposed to look like what Jesus dressed like. Why do you think so many people walked up to him and called him rabbi before they knew who he was? Because he was dressed as one that was expected to be holy. You know what he wore? What was right in the eyes of God. You know what they were expected to wear? What was right in the eyes of God. They looked different than everybody else. Was that because they chose that? No. It was because God expected them to be separate, to look different, to talk different. Why? So that when they needed to know what God said, they said, we're going to go ask those guys. They had confidence that God picked them for a reason, and they would go and they would ask, what thus saith the Lord? They conducted themselves the way that they did because they wanted other people to be confident that they were who God said that they would be. They didn't do it for their own egos or their own pride. They did it for what was good, what glorified, what elevated the name of the Lord. You know what God should have? The best things. You know who God should have in service for them? The choicest servants. Well, if you were just walking by, didn't know any different, as just a bunch of dudes that were dressed in plain clothes. But until somebody, until you ask, hey, anybody know where I can find out what God has to say on this? Go talk to them fellows over there in them weird clothes that you was talking about before. They look different, they talk different, because if you want to know what God says, they know. Then all of a sudden, those fellows, they're not dressed so weird anymore. When you hear what they have to say, you're confident that that's not man's opinion, that's God's opinion. Now go with me back to verse number 6. It says, The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. God promised him peace. But that was the covenant that he made. He said, I'll give you life and peace. It says, he walked with me in peace and equity. We've talked about that word equity. That word equity means, literally, nowadays, you're most likely going to find it in reference to marriage. But you know what that means? What you own is what I own. There's no secrets. Everything that I am is promised to you. 
It says, Levi walked with God in equity. You know what that meant? Everything that Levi had, God already owned it. You do realize that the Levites lived in houses that were attached to or leaned up against the house of God. They didn't have castles and temples they weren't supposed to. They didn't have great mansions and great estates. You know where they lived? They lived at the place where God owned it. You know what they tended to? The things that God owned. They didn't own anything. They weren't worried about wealth or riches or things that the carnal man may have been concerned with. A true priest was only concerned about tending to the things of God. He had faith that God would take care of his needs and that it was an honor and a privilege to do anything at the house of God, let alone to be entrusted with something as a priest. It says that Levi walked in peace and equity with God. It says, and did turn many away from iniquity. Those are the results. Doesn't say that God turned them away from iniquity. It says that Levi turned them away from iniquity. Now what he used? He used God's word. He used God's understanding that he had gifted to him. He used God's law. He used, essentially, all the tools that God had given to him. But it says that Levi turned them. You know why it says that Levi did? Because God told Levi to go, but unless Levi would have gone, he wouldn't have done nothing. God told Levi to know, but if he didn't know anything, he couldn't have helped anybody. God told Levi to study, but if he didn't study, he wouldn't know what God expected when people came and asked what thus saith the Lord. God told him to be ready, but if he wasn't ready, he couldn't have done anything. God did the work. Don't get me wrong. But he's giving Levi credit for Levi's faithfulness. He says, because Levi did what I said, when I said, because of his attitude, because of the spirit that he had inside of him, because at heart he was a servant, Levi turned many away from iniquity. You know what that turned away from means? Some of them were already face first in it, but yet when he spoke truth to them, it caused them to come to themselves and get things made right with the Lord. You know what else turned away from means? Some people hadn't gotten into it yet, but they was looking at pastures that they thought were greener, and they came to ask Levi, and when Levi gave them the answer, they said, I don't want what's on that hill. Their heart was turned back unto the Lord. Some were on their way out of the camp, and their heart they may have already left. They had packed up. They had decided that they were going to leave the things of God. But Levi met him at the gate. Gave him a few words that may have been fitly spoken. And before they got to the gate, they had turned around and they had moved, moved back into where they had just left. He safeguarded the people of God from the things that were dangerous to them. He corrected those things which were full of iniquity and caused people to see the error in their ways. He took those that were dead set on walking away from God and he restored the desire to do something for the Lord within their hearts. Why? Because all he knew was what God said. Everything he did was because he believed that that's what God wanted him to do. He didn't, I believe it, truly. I don't believe he got up and preached hellfire and brimstone every week. Because if you shear the sheep every week, eventually you're going to start cutting skin. There's not going to be any hair left to trim. I believe Levi had a servant's heart. He wanted what was best for other people because God desired for his people to be blessed and bountiful, but most importantly, right with God. And Levi knew that all those blessings wouldn't come if they weren't right with God. I believe some people he may have corrected as a father has to correct a son. 
I believe others, he may have met them with tears in his eyes, begging them not to go. Levi was many things to many different people, but according to the word of God, he was the messenger of God. He turned many away from iniquity, and he lived a life full of what? Life and peace. God not only took care of his needs, God safeguarded Levi because of what Levi was. Because of what Levi had committed himself to be for the Lord. Now we've studied all of that this week. To get into a couple of months ago, book of Revelation, we talked about it. It says that the Lord has made us what? Kings and priests. You know what a priest is? It's a messenger from God. We just read it in our verses. A mouthpiece. Somebody that can go out with authority and say, What thus saith the Lord? You know what that means? God thinks pretty highly of you. Because God doesn't entrust just anybody to go out and say, What thus saith the Lord? Knowing that all those that He redeemed, He said that they would go out and be witnesses unto Him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. God, knowing that, still chose to save you because he thought you were something special that you could go and tell people. Not one person has God ever saved that he said, you know what, you, you don't have to go. You wouldn't be too good as a messenger. No, everybody that receives sonship also re receives the priestly garments that once were reserved to the Levites. You know why? Because God expects you in your mouth to one let it be full of knowledge and the law of truth should be found in your mouth that your lips should not have iniquity that you should be able to say what thus saith the Lord with authority and power because you live it every day in your life and you know it's true you should have the reputation as Levi did, that you are a messenger of the Lord of hosts. Well, Brother Jordan, I'm not a preacher. Neither was Levi. He was just a priest. You know who did a lot of preaching in Aaron's day when he was the high priest? It was Moses. In fact, Moses asked God to let him take Aaron with him down there into Egypt because Moses had stutter. And he said, well, Aaron, he talks pretty. Can he go down with me? And if I've got a problem, he can translate. God says, fine, take him. Aaron never said a thing. Aaron did a lot of things behind the scenes. Why? Because that's what God had called him to do. To be a servant. People should know that what you say is not tainted with self. Amen. And once they observe that in you, you'll get a reputation as a messenger. You know why you'll have that reputation? Because people will hear what you say and say, that don't sound like what other people say. What he's got comes from somewhere else. They may think that you got it from your preacher, you got it from the Bible, that you got it from hanging around down at church, but when one of these days the Lord may deal with their heart and realize that what you're saying doesn't come from man, it comes from God. And they'll fall under conviction. If you're faithful to do as Levi did, to walk with the Lord in peace and equity. God will elevate you, maybe not in the way that you thought, but God will give you the opportunity to be put on a pedestal and let people poke you, see if what you've got is real. And they're going to come like they did to Jesus, and some of them are going to try and tempt you. Some of them are going to try and catch you in a lie. But there are going to be a whole lot of people that show up because they are interested in what thus saith the Lord. Because they truly want to know what God says. There's still people out there that are hungry. They're starving. Some of them have packed up their bags and are about ready to leave camp. God may send you by their way to give them a word. Why? To turn them from iniquity. God may use you to encourage somebody that's about ready to fall. Strengthen someone that was just about to give up. 
He may send you out into the highways and byways looking for those that have already fallen face first in it. To pick them up, to clean them off, to bind their wounds and leave them at an inn and say, I'll pay all the cost for them. Why, to show them that somebody did care. So that they'd inquire, who's that? Oh, well, they go to church down here. They do this kind of stuff all the time. I've heard him say time and time again, don't thank him for it, thank the Lord, because the Lord's the one that allowed it to happen. Somebody that was in iniquity may turn towards the house of God, seeking to understand why somebody would do for them something that they wouldn't do for somebody else. There are many ways that someone can be turned from iniquity. Levi didn't care which one he got to do. He just wanted to be in service for the Lord. You know what Levi's focus was on? God said that Levi walked with him. You know what that means? I think Levi walked with God. When God says it, you can take it to the bank. There's a lot of men that say that they walk with God and there's no evidence for it. Levi, God took up for him and said, Oh yeah, Levi walked with me. Levi walked hand in hand with me in peace and equity. You know what that means? There were no problems between him and God. Levi's focus was on his walk, not on the walks of others. When God told him to go and tell, he'd go and tell, and he'd get concerned about that person. When people would ask him, he took it very serious because he wanted them to understand this isn't what Levi said, it's what God said. But by Levi being faithful personally, God used him to help publicly. That's what we should desire to be as priests for the Lord. Let it be said of us that we walked with God. That we had equity with the Lord. That we had peace with the Lord. That knowledge and His law were in our lips, or in our mouth. That our lips had no iniquity. That's what was said of Nathaniel. Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. That was quite a statement. Quite the praise from the Lord. And that was before he became a disciple. Why? Because before that he was focused on his own walk. Let it be said of us that we were messengers sent from heaven. That we had in our mouths the very message that was required to turn people from iniquity. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.